Hello guys, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Git and GitHub today. Uh, as the as code camp progresses, for those doing front end, you guys are actually going to be pushing your code to Git, to GitHub actually using Git. So Git is a version control software, which is free, which you use to actually store your code and actually check the versions of your code. So what I mean is this, with Git, you could actually save your code. And if you make a mistake, you could actually go back to a previous version of your code and uh, continue from there. So for Windows users, uh, first things first, you have to make sure you have Git. Uh, on your laptop, I also have to make sure you have Git or uh, VS Code on your laptop. And then you also have to make sure you register on GitHub. So uh, first things, search for Git. Search for Git on your device and click on downloads. Now, for whichever operating system you're using, there is a version for it. So there's a one for Mac, there's one for Windows, there's one for those who are using Linux. So if you're using Lin if you're using Windows, click on Windows and it's going to take you to where you can download your setup. Now, as you can see, it's already checked mine, but I already have Git, so I'm not going to download it again. So after downloading it, you go to your folder where Git is actually downloaded and you, you know, like you always do, run as administrator. It shows you this and it shows you this dialog. Now you click on next, uh, you click on next, you click on next, you click on next. Click on next, you click on next, 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 and then you install. Well, I already have Git installed on my laptop, so I'm not going to install. After installing, you click finish and that's that. Now you also still in your browser, you search for, for those who don't have VS Code installed, this is what you do, search for VS Code. And it's going to show you where to download VS Code from. You click on download. Now it's going to show you different options for different operating systems. There's one for Windows, there's one for Linux, and there's one for Mac. So uh, most preferably, I like using the system installer. You could use uh, the user installer, whichever you prefer. And you click on the hardware version you're using, either 64-bit or 32-bit or ARM. You click on it, and then install it. After installing it, the same thing you did with the same thing you did with the Git, the same thing you do with uh, VS Code. So you right click and run as administrator. And okay, it's already telling me that I already have this set up. So um, what you just, what you do is you click and then install. After installing it, then we are set to go. So after doing that, the next place you are to go to is to search for GitHub. GitHub, okay, just go to github.com and you, so on github.com, you register, you register using GitHub, but I already have an account there, so there's no need. So for those who don't have an account, you register GitHub and mind you, take note of this, please. Uh, take note of the username you use to register on GitHub and 
also take note of the email address you use because you will use it to register or to set up your kits locally on your lap on your laptop. So after registering and doing all that, then you come to your start menu folder immediately and then you click you click on the git cmd sorry or you, you search for git bash git bash or search for git git bash comes up and you click on git bash so clicking on git bash is actually supposed to open git bash yeah so after opening git bash so for a first time user of git what you have to do is set git up and by setting git up i mean you actually have to set up your profile okay not your profile but you have to set up a local profile per se on git so that git recognizes you as a user on your laptop because without that you can't actually access git and github so and it's most preferable to use your email you use for registering on github and your username to to also do that registration so that the both of them go in sync so as a first time user i will be copying some commands i've actually saved somewhere uh you click on I'm actually going to show you this. So, uh, I right click and I paste. So, this is what we'll be using. So, as a first time user, you this is the command you use to initialize your name on GitHub. It is git config dash dash global and then user dot name yes dash dash global user dot name your username so user dot name and uh, in quotes your username so my username is actually ut frank and this and click on enter and git actually recognizes that and then you register your email too so git config dash dash global user dot email and my email address which And that is it. You have set up Git on your local machine. Now, the next step is to go to GitHub and set up a repository. So once you finish registering on GitHub, you see a sidebar where you create a new repository. You click on the new button there. And it takes you to this page where you create a repository. So I am just going to create a demo. So I could call this repository. Come here, click. I could call this repository demo. So if it is available, Git, GitHub is actually going to tell you this name is actually available. And then I scroll down and I create a repository. Now creating a repository for the first time there are commands there that GitHub actually shows you for the first time. It actually helps you know what to do uh, using the command line to register or to set up a new repository or create a new repository using the command line on Git. So the first command is Git init. So how this works is opening your Git bash again you have to 
Okay, after setting up your GitHub repository, you could close this and then you open the folder in which you're working with. So my folder is in desktop. And this is the folder I am working with. So I right click on this folder and you see git bash here. I click on git bash here and git bash opens for me in this folder. So it is practically very easy. For those who don't know how to navigate using command line, this is very, very easy to use. So first things first, you type git in it, meaning you have to initialize git into this repository to help git know that this is a repository you'll be working with and to help git track your changes. So clicking on enter, it says we initialize existing repository. So good. This repository has been initialized. So the next thing you do is you first of all add all the files in the folder so that Git knows all the files it's actually going to be keeping track of. So you do that by typing the command git add. Now, since you're going to be adding all the folders inside, you could actually keep a space and space and name uh, type in the name of the folders. But since you're adding all the folders, you could just git add. Uh, full stop at the end, which means it should add all the folders. And after that, you click enter and git adds all the folders. So the next thing you have to do is create a commit message to help you and help git keep track of the changes you make to your project. So to do that, you type git commit. hyphen m and using quotes you type your commit message so i could say first commit on this project basically the commit is a message you use to remember the particular version of your code at a particular point in time. That's what Git uses to keep track of your changes. So whenever you leave a commit message, Git links that commit message to the state of your project at that particular point in time. So once I commit, you find that all my commits, all my files have actually been tracked using this uh, commit message that I did. So after doing that, you go back to GitHub, the repository you just created, and then you copy the link. You copy the link of the repo you just created. You could copy it from your URL, you copy it, and then you come back to your git bash and you type in this command. Because now, you, since you've already made these changes and added, added them to your git repository, on your local machine, you actually have to do the same to your repository online so that both of them could be in sync. So you do that using this command, git remote add origin. Then you paste, you, to paste you right click and you select paste. Now, after selecting paste, and you see the demo, you, at the end of the URL, you add dot git to it and click enter. Now, after that, the repository has been added online. So now you have to, sorry, it hasn't been added, but the link to the repo has been added to your local machine. So the next step is to push it to git. So git push dash u origin. Now you see this master at the end of this, uh, this master here, 
that you actually have to add that to show that that's uh, the branch you're pushing to. Say um, master as enter. So uh, GitHub is actually going to send you a sign a signing link. So sign into your browser. Are you signed to your browser? And it's going to open a link where I'm going to sign in. Okay. Okay, I think my then it seems to be having some issues. So, um, oh, okay. It actually worked. And if you come back here and you refresh, rather my project has actually been pushed to GitHub. Now this is the first step to pushing your Git now you have to use a particular product of GitHub, which is called Git Pages. So what Git Pages does is that Git Pages more like hosts your uh, your project online. So turn it into like a website per se, uh, using a particular link. So the way you do that is by going to settings. Click on settings. You scroll down until you see Git pages. Now, seeing Git pages here, you click on this link here. On that Git pages, it takes you to Git pages. Now, uh, it tells uh, you see that here it says Git pages is currently disabled. Select the source below to enable Git pages for this repository. So you click on this node and select a source which is the master branch, which you just pushed to recently. And then you click on save. Now it gives you a link. So if I click on this link and open a new tab, you're going to find out that the website is going to be ready in a few minutes. Okay, so it says there isn't a of page sites here. Uh, you actually have to give it some time for it to, you know, come up. So let's see. Folder. Website. Save. And I open it again. And voila, this is the website I actually put. So what you do is uh, get pages, you come there and after selecting the branch, you select not root, but this time docs. And when you select docs, you click on save and then it opens the URL for you and you open the URL and uh, you have your project posted on git pages. So uh, I think that's all for now. So Thank you very much.